So today I managed to catch up with Dr. Roman Jampolski for a quick conversation. Dr. Roman Jampolski is a computer scientist known for his work on behavioral biometrics, security of cyber worlds and artificial intelligence safety. Jampolski is an author of some 100 publications, including numerous books. His work is frequently profiled in popular media such as the BBC, MSNBC, Yahoo, New Scientist and many others. Jampolski has warned of the possibility of existential risk from advanced artificial intelligence and has advocated research into boxing artificial intelligence. Professor Roman Jampolski, welcome. Could you start by saying a little about your professional background and your interest in artificial intelligence? Uh, sure, so I got my PhD in computer science and uh, I did initial work on pattern recognition, specifically on behavioral biometrics, which uh, is highly relevant to many subfields of artificial intelligence. And uh, I also do work in cybersecurity, so overall my interests are in the intersection of those two fields, uh, making intelligent systems both capable and safe and secure. Would you say that AI poses a serious existential risk? It could, uh, if we actually succeeded developing systems which are as capable as people or even more capable, but are not well controlled, not well designed, don't have necessary safety mechanisms built in. It's quite possible that there would be side effects which uh, could cause significant damage. Could you give us some sense of the risks that we face with superintelligent AI? I can't hear you. Can you repeat it, please? Could you give us some sense of the risks that we face with superintelligent AI? Ah, uh, sure. So typically, such systems are used to control something. They control stock market. They control military response. They can control nuclear weapons. Uh, if they are misused, abused, or just misaligned, it's possible that they can, for example, lead to a nuclear war as one potential way of exterminating humanity. So what organizations or researchers do you think are closest to making superintelligence a reality? Uh, I would say Google and specifically DeepMind is probably at the forefront of developing this technology. Uh, luckily, the main uh, researchers are well aware of uh, potential dangers. Um, so DeepMind has a safety team and is taking this uh, very seriously as far as I can tell. What can we do to contain AI or to make AI more safe? Well, that's the whole point of my research. I'm trying to figure out if uh, anything can be done to make it safe and secure. Uh, it seems like there is a number of things we can try to make it safer, not necessarily safe. So there are limits on communication, limits on ability we can place into such systems. But it's still an open open question. Uh, that's, that's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, and this is a very young field. We just started work, you know, within five, ten years. So, still a lot of open questions, a lot of problems to be resolved. Theories on the singularity, the point where machine intelligence evolves beyond human intelligence, seem to imply for some a sort of metaphysical view of technology. Some would say the debate on AI is actually about religion. People turn to metaphysics rather than deal with science fact. What do you believe? Do you believe that AI will eventually become conscious in some way? So consciousness and intelligence are not necessarily connected. You can be not uh, experiencing any internal states of uh, qualia and be quite capable at controlling your environment. There is not a need to connect the two. It's very likely that uh, we can develop systems which are both intelligent and conscious but it's not relevant in any way to safety issues. It's more of interest to philosophy and robot rights and suffering of software, questions like that. Mm -hmm. 
So a common view now is that AI will displace human labor. Assuming that machine intelligence becomes the infrastructure for a post-industrial civilization, doesn't that suggest that future societies will be very different? Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, it changes the whole economy, right? If you have free labor, you can do things you couldn't do before. A lot of products and services uh, become quite possible, and at the same time, lots of people lose their jobs. So you have uh, almost universal technological unemployment, so you need to figure out ways to take care of these people, uh, provide maybe some sort of support income, maybe basic assets. Uh, we need to figure out uh, how to avoid uh, social unrest uh, as a result of this uh, change. Dr. Roman Yampolsky, thank you very much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for listening. In other programs, I'll be doing more interviews, having more conversations, discussing different topics in science. That's all today.